Oh. Oh, heck yeah, if you love someone, please set them free, right? Because that's really all what it's about. That's Sting right there, of course, <laughs> giving us some great advice. Doing a little uh, Agnes Vivarelli and Dan Radio Style Unite to fight Woo-hoo! forces of crime and negative energies <laughs> and all those things out there. Today, we're going to talk about the mad mystic of 48th Street production. Yes. Sounds pretty good. I should do the voice stuff for him. But really, what the hell is that, Agnes? What are we talking about today? Well, there's a guy called Ronnie Osborne, and he's done a series of a dozen very short YouTubes, two to five minutes long maximum. And he goes through the questions that were asked in Neville's lectures when he was obviously alive. And they give, that it's helps. like, it's a Q and A. Yeah. So we're going to post that down below when you and I upload this to our channels We'll put the playlist so people can watch those 12 YouTubes in more detail, but we're going to talk about the concepts in there today. Yeah, or at least a couple of them that we were into. Who knows? We'll yeah. see where they get us. But, uh, and I do agree. That it's one thing that's really cool about that link and about this, uh, this it's a cha- uh, channel, not channel. What is it when you compile videos? I'm forgetting the name playlist. of it. When, playlist. playlist. Thank you. It's yeah. a playlist of these little shorts and they're awesome. They're like three minutes long. Yep. You have to read them and they've got kind of music in the background, you know, it's, you know but it's, it's really well done. And like you were saying, and I think this is what you were exceptionally good at, by the way, it's like your superpower is <laughs> taking Neville Goddard and like, Taking one of his, uh, you know, few page chapters or stories and condensing it down into this bite-sized morsel that is delicious yet not overly cumbersome to chew on. Great with sweet chili sauce. I th- oh, absolutely. Sweet chili sauce, especially. So on a total side salad, I've been making popcorn shrimp lately, just kind of playing around with it. And that, what is that? that so you take um, shrimp and you, uh, you batter it in um, uh, flour and then you dip it again in egg and then you go into um, panko, wow. or I'm sorry, coconut. I'm sorry, uh, in panko. That's the mixture, I'm sorry. And so it becomes coconut fried shrimp. Oh. And it, my gosh, it's uh, heavenly uh, for sure. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so the sweet chili sauce is just a great dipping that sauce. That would go that. perfect with that. Side salad. <laughs> um, Side salad. But delicious nonetheless. I hope I made someone in our audience hungry because... <laughs> I just did to myself. Yum. That sounds yummy. So of of the stories, I guess, um, did you have one that you wanted to kind of start with? I was curious. I I had a couple Mm. of them that, oh, I wanted to call out real quick too. We got a fellow friend amongst us uh, that I just wanted to say hi to, Alicia. Awesome. Thank you for uh, for, uh, talking to (laughs) Anya and I. That's really good stuff. Uh, But yeah, so uh, I had a couple of them that I I had picked out and that I thought were kind of interesting. You You want me to start with one? Okay. You do yours and then I'll do mine after. Yeah. Such Such a gentlewoman. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Uh, so there's one that talked about acceptance of the end. And I, I liked it because it kind of had that, that acceptance concept in there. And I've talked some about that, uh, not, not quite as perfectly shortened. I mean, I do long-winded videos. But the, the end, kind of accepting the fact that this is what is so. So many of us, it seems, kind of waver i think in that belief concept and i don't want to go off necessarily on a tangent curious what you think about it yourself but when we truly accept that what we are imagining and what we're creating is mm. so and you don't actually doubt that and that was one of goddard's major major things yep once you've done that it it changes the game completely and then a lot of this letting go it's not even letting go per se it's i'm i know it's coming i it, yeah. I, I'm not even necessarily letting go. I'm just not asking anymore because I know it's yep. coming. I, if I want to have a friend, uh, when they come over tomorrow, I'm like, hey, dude, do me a favor and stop by that really awesome Italian place on your way over and bring me some of those, I don't know, whatever the heck's. And uh, I want to try them. They're so super good. And he's like, oh, totally, I'll do that. I don't call him up an hour later and go, hey, dude, when you yeah. leave tomorrow, like, no, it's, <laughs> it's asked for. I got exactly. this. Exactly. Exactly. So I think, do you, I mean, where do you feel on that whole kind of concept? I mean, again, he does it in three minutes. Dan just blew yeah. three minutes talking about pasta. So what do you got going on? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing that it's the inactive things with 
Neville with the law of attraction that are the most challenging for people. People are action figures. So they want to do something. Give me something to do and I'll do it. Whereas acceptance is an inactive inactivity. So he talks about this acceptance and I think that's a, the thing. We're often in a lack of acceptance. We're often in when's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? You know, and all the details of that which preoccupies our brain. Well, there's a concept of that that I've been spending a lot of time talking about recently too. Uh, and it's, I think a lot of times, not everyone. So I, please, for all, for all of you watching right now, it's, it's not everyone, but some out there, and maybe this fits you, the reason we keep doing the work is because we don't think it's happening or we yep. don't think it's happening fast enough or we yep. think we're doing it wrong. Exactly. Right. And it's, that is kind of in my mind too, is a big part of this acceptance. It's, it does take a little time. Mm. I'm not sure how long that, you know, that really depends on a lot of factors, but when you realize it's done and it's, you know, it's maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, but it's done. It's already done. I don't need to question it and it will show up when it yeah. shows up and it, at the exact right time is mm. what I have found in life myself too. The timing of things is beautiful often. Yeah. So. And it's usually way longer than what you would like. It's very rare that you go, wow, that happened so fast. I wasn't even waiting for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, especially those. Those are the funny ones. You're like, wow, I mean, that was, <laughs> wow, okay, why don't you yeah. do other things that why? fast, right? Like, yeah, exactly. whatever, whatever universe. Yeah. <laughs> well, because that was in, because I, I wrote stuff down about this one too. This was in the second one of the series of 12. Ooh. Ooh. And he was saying acceptance of the end wills the means so it's when you accept that it is done that it brings in the means of which it happens so it's not just the fact that you realize that the asking was successful i guess you're actually saying that that's a required part the whole i guess letting go it's also been named yeah, but you're saying go. it's actually that's an actually powerful yes yeah you know what though yeah when i think about it out loud right now on the video which is really great when that happens um you're right, because it does. It solidifies your actual belief and total understanding of, and it does, I think, cinch in the, the conscious mind, right? That part of us that will frequently question, maybe it's the ego, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. hard to say what exact part of us is annoying during the day. I think it's that ego -y part, but yeah, exactly. And uh, you're right. When you, so when you accept, mm. now does Goddard have any sort of, uh, does he get into that in a larger sense in any way, or is it just kind of that simple, just cut and dry? Well, he, he goes on to say, no, it is already done, already a fact. Walk as though it were and things will happen to make it so. And although time beats slowly in this dimension, it will bring you confirmation of your assumption. So it's walking around with the doubt removed. That's how, what living in the assumption and, is. And the other part of it, and you just reminded me with the words that yeah. I've forgotten already, um, that the time part of it is, you know, that oh, we still have... Time beats yeah. slowly in this dimension. Yeah, time. Well, it according does. to us. According right. to us. Because we're often in between desire and manifestation. So that's when time seems to beat slowly according to us. We're really right. relative. Well, yeah. that, you get into Einstein, but it is everything's especially with time. It's always relative to another thing. Really? Mm. I mean, that's otherwise it's times irrelevant. How many times you've been sitting yep. there for five minutes and it went by like that? Or how many yeah. times you sat there for five minutes and you're like, Jesus, am I going to die of old age or what yeah. the hell? Yeah, exactly. You're standing in the checkout line and the lady pulls out, you know, pennies. Oh, and he's like, oh, hell me lord <laughs> do they still have pennies over there i they do they haven't gotten rid of them yet it costs more to make them than what they're worth yeah. so yeah it's fantastic we're, yeah. we're really just st i've st I've still got pennies here in london but when i go back to sydney they've removed all the copper the ones the twos are gone they've been gone for well they're not made of years. copper here anymore they're made of some cheaper version of metal okay. but yeah but they're still <laughs> stupid you like, get them and you're just angry you're like why really like you weren't willing to give me that you know, like just, anyway that's yeah. again side salad hi it's dan radio style thanks for joining me um so yeah it's funny you read you read them kind of in the you watched them in the same order i did um yeah. so i'll let you pick the next one because it could very well be the one i've got selected no you do it first oh I'll, you oh and then you'll fall because you you've actually do done more homework Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
to do it first because you said you only You're going to be the one on the relay that takes the baton the final <laughs> distance. And drops like, it and drops I'm done. It. I'm spent. Uh, all right. Um, so, do we have to earn it? There was one that talked about. Yes. And I liked this because there was, yeah, there was kind of this misnomer, I think, in a lot of people's minds that you can't get anything for nothing, right? You, nothing's yeah. free. There's nothing's no, free. no free yeah. lunch. Um, yeah. You know, tell that to someone who's had a free lunch. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> there are sometimes other costs, but I've literally just had people pay for my lunch and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to, you know, so. So there is a free lunch. There's a such, you can actually manifest. So there, it, the, it gets into it and you might have the, the, <laughs> the words written out, but it gets into the aspect that a lot of us have these beliefs and the beliefs, if, if you have a belief where I have to earn this, I have to go through some sort of pain to yep. acquire this thing before me, then you will manifest a level of pain before you yep. manifest that certain thing. But if yes. you believe that you can just have this thing and that universe source, I think they use God even specifically because it's Goddard and it matches with his name. But if, if you kind of ask for it, the, God's happy to give it to you. That's what it's all about. Yes, yeah. here you go. Thank yeah. you for asking. That's all I wanted you to do. It's a, a world of thanksgiving. We're thanksgiving once a year here in the United States and I think other parts of the world because we're thankful for all the things that we yeah. are given. And it's yeah. a good reminder. So knowing that we don't have to earn it, and you can believe the opposite if you'd like, but mm. what we believe, and I think that's really the key point, at least to me on this, is what we believe is really what shapes uh, our experience. Yeah. I mean, I've kind of frequently talked about it on my shows. What you think, what you say, what you do is what you manifest, but your belief is kind of like a, on the end of a pastry thing, like the star shaped end, like, you know, and you spit out a little star cookie. That's the belief. Like the belief is what makes it star shaped, right? Like yes. your cookie doesn't have to be star shaped. It could be a big fat round blob. I mean, what, what do you want? I mean, it's it could be a square. Visually, you know the sound effect too. What the? That, yeah, I the think so. That's shape. really where I sold. I really took it home with that. I point. like the star shape, as you believe. <laughs> you believe nice. is star shaped. No, creation is finished. There is nothing to earn. No need to sweat your brow. So yeah, it's that. And I do think that that earning, that whole thing of earning, comes from our parents' generation and the grandparents. You have to work hard. You have to earn. You've got to, you know, all that. Well, and in the generation. States specifically, the Great Depression. Yes, yes. Huge for us. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of uh, great-grandparents were alive yeah. then, and so it was beat down. So anyway, yeah, I, I didn't want to b- interrupt. But. but yeah, there's this... See, we talk about conscious creation within Neville's work and within the Law of Attraction. But really, what it is is you've got lots of different creations that are exist simultaneously and you are really selecting you're not consciously creating anything yeah the book thing the book on the Uh, books on the bookshelf i love this analogy i love your analogy yeah Yeah, i love this this is actually one of our first shows i think yeah oh okay yeah i remember talking about that with you but it was yeah you select a book you read it that's your selection doesn't mean all the other books cease to exist they're just laying there they recede into the background they're dormant but you can go and pick those books anytime so if you go into picking the book that you want to read that you read is i'm poor and you're doing that really well if you don't want to read that book anymore and you don't want to be poor, you put that back on the bookshelf and you select the, maybe the I'm wealthy one and you start to think, feel and believe because it has to come from your belief systems first. It also has to come through your focus because it's a focus based universe. You yeah, you're right. hundred percent. Focus. hundred percent. So yes, you've got to learn what the thoughts, feelings and beliefs of a person that has that state of being. Cause Neville talks a lot about states the state of wealth has very different thoughts than the state of poverty. Now, when you say state, is that that whole, uh, and it's not, I know a lot of us call it living from the end, if you will, but it's more that um, like, I actually am feeling like I have a bunch of money right now. Yes, like when, that's what a when state it's like, is. Yeah, yeah. And it's either a, maybe I do have some money in savings. So because yeah. of that, I actually feel wealthier I feel or it. it's a way of trying to get to that level of feeling before you have that, which you seek. And yeah, so that state of being, what do you call state of being, state yes, of being, yeah, and that is a powerful manifesting tool, and it requires yeah. a great deal of imaginal work, really. I think yeah. internally to get and to that. 
yes, you got to, you got to imagine and focus on that state, but you also have to deactivate and stop the old state simultaneously. Yeah. So you got to yeah. pull your focus off that. Right. Right. So, Which if is you've for practiced yeah. being poor for a really long time. Yeah. That state's going to be extremely natural to you, even though it's incredibly uncomfortable. It's still natural for you. You understand how to think about it, how to feel about it, because you've practiced that over and over and over. So then saying to yourself, I've got to think in a wealthy state, you're going to go, well, how the heck do I do that? I've never thought those thoughts. I've never felt that state before. So you've got to work out ways to feel that. And this applies to being single, to wanting to be in a relationship, having horrible work and you want to have meaningful, wonderful workplace, it doesn't matter what the subject is, it makes no difference. And I agree. The one, I mean, one thing that's really powerful too, uh, just to uh, mention it, is when we start to remember these things in the past, like you said, being poor for long periods of time, maybe for example, yep. like you grew up that way, and it's, grew up that it's way. an issue of getting out of that that mindset or even constantly reminding yourself, well, I was brought up poor. I was brought up in a poor household. I was yeah. brought up on the other side of the track. It's also, we do that too with, with many things, with relationships, with our yeah. childhood, with our mothers. I mean, I was, I'm not bringing it up again, but I used to do it a lot, right? Like yeah. it's that whole um, reassociating or reactivating or keeping that affiliation with this past negative thing that yeah. really does keep it active within us. And it's yeah. when we finally let go of telling everybody, well, my dad cheated on my mom. Yeah. Like, you yeah. don't need to tell anybody that, but yet you still identify with it everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. And that's where I think a lot of people don't realize, oh my God, you're right, I do that. And that's mm. keeping it active. Like they yeah. just don't see it. And a lot of us just don't pay enough attention to the yeah. stuff that goes through our brains. Exactly. Or we always assume we're right. Mm. A lot of us do that. I, you know, I've had my moments where it's like, no, nah, and then you're like, oh, crap, you're right. Damn it. So, but yeah, I, think it's good I mean, to remember Dan Neville things. talks about that a lot. You know, people say the past is dead. Well, Neville had that whole thing about the past is still alive. Not the actual experience, but the tentacles emotionally yeah. from what happened in the past and you're still activating it today. Like when you say things like, you know, all men are bastards or um, relationships are hard. <laughs> that, that comes from past experience that you heard from your parents or your mom right. or, or whoever. And then you've got this little tentacle that, you know, sticks to you. And, and, and many of us have friends that are kind enough to remind us of these things as well, too. I mean, again, it's just... Yeah. These things come all over the place and a lot of people, and that's what's tough about talking to others. So we've mentioned this, and this is always a good, really positive side salad. But one thing that also comes when you talk about your manifestations, even with people that are supportive and even with people that are powerful in the law of attraction, yep. they may have beliefs of their own still, you will find. Like yep. a lot of people we've probably met are, oh, I can manifest money or I can manifest a job and I can't seem to do this, right? And yeah. it's like, yeah. So again, a lot of us have our own little makeups and mm. hookups and filters. Mm. And so again, we just need to be really, it's where we're at with the belief cycle. It's not yeah. necessarily what everyone else is saying. It's what do you actually what believe? What do you believe? Exactly. And then if you talk to people that are going to counter that, ah, it's probably not the best idea. You know, like waste of energy. Talk about something else. Maybe yeah. the weather. Yeah. The weather's beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. So I, uh, I didn't get any more than that per se, but I, if I had to, I could probably yank one, um, out of, out of, out of an orifice if, if necessary, <laughs> but, uh, that might, Anya Fiverelli, do you happen be, to have that any, might be the most watched YouTube, if you right? <laughs> and it was like exactly at 22 minutes when Dan is like, Whoa, what do you do? Suddenly I'm like in a database someplace you know, as well, probably. You remember that I'm extremely visual. So whenever you do I that. I wouldn't want to do that to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Going back to the Mystic yes. 48th Street. We're in the salad so, in front of us, not the side one. Not the side salad. The mm. main dish. We're going oh, on yeah. the main dish. Delicious. Okay. Number Delicious. one, the first little YouTube that I watched, he talked about knowing what you want, claim that you already have it. Now. People can say, claim it, how do I do that? Well, you do that mentally and you can just give thanks in advance. Thank you, universe, God, whoever you want to talk to, for, and that shows trust, belief, and those are the things that create and pull things in. 
You can't be wishy-washy and expect to get something. No, and it, and it, get, it brings to it also that, uh, that concept and, and mindset of these things are there for us to manifest. Like, again, it kind of goes back to that, um, you know, I have to earn it. No, no, that's there no. for you. It's, yeah. it's just, all you got to do is claim it. It's just claim yeah. your reward. Here's your reward ticket just hanging in front of you. Just grab it yeah. and then write yeah. your initials on it. Like you can even do that mentally. It's kind of funny if you think yeah. about it. Like, like you see your specific person, for example, and you just pull the tag off the front of them. Hopefully it doesn't hurt. Oh, well. And then just sign your initials to it. That's yours. You've claimed it. This is, this is yours or, yeah. or this new job or this new car, or this new boat, this new planet that you're going to yeah. own. I don't know, whatever the hell you're trying yeah. to do. Some people have large aspirations, I think. Yeah, like building hotels on the moon, you know, things like that. Well, who doesn't want to do that? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm in line with that. I'd, it would be fun to go like in orbit. I'd do that maybe, but I don't know if I were, yeah. I don't want to live yeah. on the moon just yet. No, not yet. No. <laughs> maybe... Couple of weeks. I don't know, who knows? It's been a tough week at work. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's a great so one. Yeah, claiming it. So, claiming um, it. yeah. What else does Goddard like, get into that? I mean, is that just kind of? I mean, that other was than just the a uh, little nugget from that one. No acceptance of it. Firstly, knowing what you want. First thing, well, that's clarity. You got to be clear. Second thing, you claim it, and you literally like the book off the bookshelf. You go and get it. Bang, and you not go and get it as in you physically go and you know rip some money out of somebody's hand it's you you claim it as in in your mental state your emotional state you say yes thank you and you just connect with the fact that you deserve that you're worthy of that because it's like so often we reject things through i'm not worthy i'm not deserving i'm yeah. not good enough and that apparently and we and you and i love to lump that into the whole self-love thing and it, yeah. that's what it is i mean that's 100 percent of what we're talking about but yeah it's like people i think hate hearing that time mm -hmm. and time again but it's like yeah. ah, hey guess what um you're gonna hear it again <laughs> yeah because you keep saying stuff <laughs> in your comment yeah. like or your email it's like yeah. well, you're you, you have some problem. Like you yeah. don't believe that, right? Yeah. So that's a huge thing. Yeah, it fixes nice. everything. Fixes sure everything. does, that's for sure. So, All right, so claiming. Now, yeah, claiming. And then number four, he talked about nothing comes from without, meaning the outside. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. From within, well, I want to hear from this. within. They, you use that word. The as without. within, so without, but okay, um, nothing yeah. comes from without. Oh, oh, so it comes from within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So okay, cool. I understand. Using that. the word without in that way. That's beautiful. It's without. very poetic. So. All springs from your own consciousness. Love isn't a product of you. You are love. So it's not a product of you. He was talking about that, that everything comes from within and then it outpictures itself externally. But it's got to be that you have the consciousness of it, as in what you are conscious of. I remember listening to It's in Your Own Consciousness and I think, well, what the heck's my consciousness? It's very simple. It is literally what you're conscious of. And what you're conscious of is what you're focusing on. And what you're focusing on is what brings in, brings in, brings in. And on that is. same note, and I've recently covered this too, it's <clears throat> the thing you have to do also or, or in line with, or I think it demonstrates as well, when you're trying to manifest, say, more love in your life, for example, yeah. you have to actually be more yes. love. You yourself have to be yes. loving. You yep. have to be doing that yes. which you are seeking in yep. order to create that connection to it, that energy to it, that attraction to it. Yes. I, uh, call it what you want, but there's yeah. definitely a thing that happens yeah. when you're being that which mm. you seek. Well, it's and magnet, it comes to you. It? Yes, yes. There if you go. You're, um, if you're in I'm unloved or I'm poor, then you're going to get no money and no one's going to love you. If you're in I'm lovable, and I feel wealthy, then money's going to come, love's going to come because it's a, the two magnets. That's the science part. Right. And, it's, and that's that the being aspect to bring that too is it's like with money, for example. Uh, some of us have those beliefs that are within us that all rich people or all wealthy people are horrible or that horrible. you don't need money yeah. or money can't buy happiness. or we've yeah. got, and, it, and it can't, but... Uh, I will say I find happiness greatly, and then having some money on top of it that's pretty rad. That's nice. So yeah, yeah. it's not a bad it's not a bad <laughs> feeling, right? So uh, the happy's outside of the money. That's not related it's, to that. I was know. poor and happy, and I'm even better and happy. Like yeah. It's, it's yeah. still relative. So again, a lot of times we can have those those uh, beliefs. Those we're not being 
a loving of money, for example. If you're going to try to be wealthy, you really truly need to have a little different love of money. You can't be yeah. hating it. You can't be thinking bad things about people with money because that really is yeah. counterintuitive to what you are trying exactly. to create. Or the same with relationships. All people yep. are bad. All women cheat. All men are horrible. All whatever, yeah. right? It's like you can't. On and on. There's a, yeah, exactly. And, There's and a, the big one, Dan, relationships oh. are hard. That's the one. I'm oh, doing. I love that one. So many people love have that. that. Relationships are hard. Well, okay. Well, if it is for you <laughs> and that's been your evidence, how about saying relationships are easy and you change that belief and then you also work on your own self-love, self-worth. So you hit the two things at the same time and then you go off and you are in a much better place to attract a good relationship. Absolutely. There's a, there's a great uh, YouTuber that I watch. I don't want to plug him at all. He's really big and he's very politically focused. So it's just, but he frequently does talk about his relationship with his wife and a lot of people, he takes interview calls and they talk about how, well, isn't it being married hard? And he's like, no, it's actually been wonderful. And you know, he's just like, yeah, it's a great mantles. thing. I've got a wonderful yeah. daughter and I just, it's great. And we don't fight. We don't, you know, he's like, we have <laughs> a great relationship and it's just, um, it's just funny because there are a lot of people who very much believe that there yeah. has to be struggle in life. There has yeah. to be, you know, it's like, and it comes back to what we were talking about before about earning. You have to struggle to earn. Right. So it's, and, I mean, it's and, and you have to be good. Like you have to like, uh, we've covered really, um, manifesting from four really awesome angles when you think about it. But yeah, I mean, all of this, you have to be what it is that you're trying to seek. You have yeah. to accept that you can do it. You have to, be, uh, get over the fact that you don't have to earn it and you certainly Ooh. need to step up and claim it. I mean, all yep. of these things yep. have to happen. Yep. We are somehow magic when we get on the mic together. I don't know, uh, Anya, so I'm not trying to toot our horn, but <laughs> toot, toot, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <sighs> yeah, good luck editing oh, that out. Yeah, that's right. That one's in there. <laughs> that one's in there. That little nugget, <laughs> that's a nugget. <laughs> Take that. Okay, moving yes. on to yeah, the next course. one. So we've done that one. Yeah, we've done it. Uh, technique for prayer. This was interesting. Oh, oh, okay. This, I'm this looking was, forward to this. This was really nicely explained by Goddard. It starts with desire, which is the main spring of action. You must condense it into a single sensation, which implies the fulfillment. I'll go back over this because this has got a few sentences in it. See this in imagination, repeat it until it's vivid and feel it real. So often I hear about prayer that please give me kind of prayer. Right. God, please give me. Right. The way he's looking at prayer, it starts with a desire. So you say to yourself, okay, I'd really like this. That is the thing that drives the bus, okay? The desire itself. So let's take them in pieces because I think this will be good because I, I, or at least at this point, I have a huge question in your mind or at least yeah. uh, from your Go vantage ahead. point. I've done shows on it, but I'm curious what your, what is desire? Because I think people get hung up on words and it's not the word. It's no. the desire. It's the... Feeling, feeling that you put that. behind that I have to have this, I need, I want this, I desire I like this. What, that, yeah. what, so what is it to you? What is, what is your... Well, it's a resonance and like you're saying, the feeling in your stomach, it's like a feeling in your gut that draws you to something or someone. Or it's whatever. even something that pushes you from behind almost to a it degree is. too. Like it's a yeah. weird force. It's a strange force. I don't know. You can't really explain when you're why in do it. I want that? Yeah. yeah. It's not that I just said, I desire this. No, no. it's not the word. Like the word means nothing. It you could say, I could say, I, I, this. And if I'm feeling what I'm feeling and wanting it, that's fine. That works. That's desire. <laughs> we'll have to put translation for that down Yeah, below. no, I don't, I'm not sure what language that was, but if you know, uh, please come comments <laughs> tell me what the hell that meant what did i say <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, did you take your medication today i know i'm <laughs> off like three cycles i think <laughs> i think you missed a few days yeah no, <sighs> no. i just well, get excited when i talk I to you on yes i'm high on life right now and uh <laughs> gosh golly the weirdness just seeps out it just yeah so okay after out. design it totally it just bleeds <laughs> from me and then so, hopefully it's infectious to others yes after desire <laughs> Then goes. So it starts with a desire, which is the main spring the of action. So that's the beginning of the whole thing. You must condense it. So you must condense the whole desire into a single sensation. Okay? So 
like the woman that wanted all those things in the law and the promise. And she used to try and visualize all those things. And she got really exhausted because there were so many things that she needed. What was suggested to her was to go to bed and go and say to herself, isn't it wonderful what's happening to me now and capture the sensation of that and not go mechanically through all those different things. That was much easier. So that's an example of capturing the sensation because if she got all those things that she wanted, whether they were for herself or for family members or whatever, the sensation would be she would feel wonderful. She would, and, and, I mean, those are the words that they used in the 1950s. Isn't it wonderful what's happening to me now? Yeah. You know, you can yeah. translate that into 2018 words depending on what generation you're it's rad, from. man. <laughs> Actually, they probably got something that's totally cooler. But so on that, on that same side too, it's... Um, I have found, and certainly with money, but I think relationships work on this too. And a lot of people, I think, really look at things from a, a very microscopic point of view. So money, for example, just because it's kind of easy, they're like, yeah. "Well, I'm going to have a nice car, and I'm going to have a, I'm going to get a new couch." And I'm, yeah. but like really, when you start to think about it, it's like a bigger thing than that. Almost, you could see the house, or you could see, or maybe that's how you see it is by walking through your house. It's just a part of all the stuff that you want, and like it's it is your reality more so than trying to think about and manifest each individual specific piece, yep. manifest the house full of the goodies. Yep. And really you're in that direction and that stuff will come through yep. that process. It actually just makes it easier in the big picture when you manifest wealth that way. And I think and, relationships are the same way. Go ahead. And it creates more of a undiluted line of energy. Yes. Using imagination between you and it, whatever it is, when you do the big umbrella, like you say, if you've, you want the house and you want the furniture and you want the car out the front and all those things, whatever it is, those are all just components of the one big thing. So you go for, isn't it wonderful that all this has fallen into place? And when you get that sensation up, obviously it encompasses all those smaller desires. And that was another one of the mystic, mad mystic things that, that was brought up in a later, later one of those clips it's the question was, can you imagine multiple things? And he talked about, yes, you can under one single act, like an umbrella. He didn't use the word umbrella. I'm using my word. Imagine the bigger thing. So it includes all the little things. Then you'd get to the feeling of feeling. He used the word ecstatic in this particular right. example. Which is better than wonderful by, by, by Ecstatic by is better than wonderful. It's probably I would say. a bit higher up. Yeah, so. it's a notch or two for sure. Yeah. So he was saying in that one that if you felt ecstatic, you wouldn't be feeling pain. You wouldn't be feeling that your house is being repossessed. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be feeling all that stuff. Capturing the feeling of ecstaticness creates the line of energy between you and your thing. Right. And that's the, I think the part that a lot of people forget the connection with it's, it is the feeling. That's why we do, yeah. like, for example, the imaginal work. You do the work to create the feeling, to create the reality in yeah. your mind where you feel it is yeah. real, where you feel like it is there. Yeah, and, and the that feeling is, has to start with a thought to generate the feeling. You don't and just that is the asking, though, by the way. Yeah. That's what, that, yeah. that is the asking, is the feeling of it. Yep. So if you're asking the question and then feeling like it's never going to happen, yep. that's what you're asking for is the feeling. Yep. Uh, the words do not matter. It's not the words. The words are meant to inspire the feeling. feeling. The feeling is how we ask. Mm. That's kind of like, kind of just hit me really right now, but it's. Actually, that'd be good on a t-shirt. <laughs> Actually, that would be. Look at you. you put the little monkey. Always in marketing. Top. I like that. You can take that one. You can run with that. Maybe just put Anya's and Dan Radio Style came up with this. That'd be good. <laughs> just down the bottom with a little C with a circle. <laughs> yeah, it's jolly, right? It's like, Copyright. and you can buy here online. Check out this. Yeah. So that I thought that was a really because I do. People often email me and say, "Look, there's so many things I need and." I don't know where to start and this is happening for my mom and this is happening for my sister. And it's like, how, how do I imagine all this stuff? It just freaks me out and it gives me anxiety when I go to bed. And it's like, well, this is the answer. If you follow Neville Goddard to that question. Yeah. This, yeah. And this, this will take you that way. I, uh, yeah, I thought you were <laughs> no, walking back down. I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah. I was okay. like, I'm on the edge of my seat going and, and, and what Anya's tell us. Well, that's it. 
Yeah, we sort of so, circled back around. Now, I want to yes. mention this other one because this one's really good too. Oh, okay. Now, he talks about in another one of these little clips, the cause of disease and pain. Ooh. We're going off on another tangent here. The he's got me on the, uh, he's got me on the title though. Yeah. It, they, it's a really good one. The physical body is an emotional filter. So pain comes from lack of relaxation. If you have pain, it's because you're tense and you're trying to force something. You can't force an idea into being attention minus the effort. How do you do that? You practice it. It will bring you to that point, learn to be attentive, but relaxed. It sounds like they're kind of opposing forces. Learn to blend them. So you're attentive, which means you're focused, but you're relaxed at the same time. That's a really great way to create things in general, but also to release yourself from any kind of physical pain. And to, and without a doubt, I mean, yes. Uh, and to take it to the kind of sort of levels I like to remind people, if we create through our energy, if we manifest yep. through our energy, yep. when we're disharmonious in ourselves yep. for whatever reason, we create, I mean, the word disease, by the way, is dis-ease, right? Yep. When you break it down and it, comes down from a lot of times of having sort of off energy for long periods of time. So yeah. it's not only important from the manifestation concept, but for your health yes. or sort of any wellness program that you're maybe trying to hold yourself to, like trying to stay in a better frame of energy at mm. more parts of the day will benefit you so greatly in life in every yeah. way, shape and form, especially manifestation. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was like a shame yeah. to leave it on just the such a small thing that there's benefits. It's huge. Yeah. So I, look, I get a lot of the a lot of the emails I get. I will say, people are trying to force something. Oh gosh! Oh, so many. They want. Yeah. It, it's the I gotta have it now. I, yeah, I can't yeah. be tomorrow. How can I get this? How can I make this happen? There's nothing wrong with desiring something and wanting it. But all, a lot of what I feel from those emails is need, not yeah. wanting. There's a difference and that's not wanting. desire. That's a, very, that's a desperation. That's a I'm in lack. And that, oh, I'm in that's, lack. Yeah. that's the feeling that you're sending out. That's what you're asking. So you can say yeah. all you want, but when you feel like you don't have it already, yeah. when you feel like you're without it and that's your feeling. And a lot of people are, I know a lot of people are going to say, maybe this is a good place to kind of finalize. But a lot of people are going to say, well, Okay, so I, I am. I'm bummed. I don't feel good. I always think this is a really important question that we get a lot. Then yeah. what do I do? What do how I do I do? fix that? Because yeah. if, I, if it's what I'm feeling that matters, how do I get myself mm -hmm. to a better feeling place? So let's, let's wrap up, I think, on a really important like positive note for anybody that's struggling and certainly anyone that's doing great. Yeah. These are good habits to remember. But what are some of the things you do when you're maybe um, – feelings are a little out of line or when you're possibly holding some ill regard to an individual, when you feel scared, mm. I don't know, whatever. So what are the I ways think, you get I past think that? My top two would be to walk in nature, just get outside where there's green something, trees, grass, a need to walk and breathe in some fresh air. That one's really good. Also sitting in meditation because meditation, you instantly think about breathing in and out more consciously rather than just walking around not being conscious of it that whole process helps you to remember to let go i'll, I'll definitely agree with your two and to, to add two more i would yeah. say for me one that's really big obviously for anyone that watches my channel music i love music yeah. music is something i can choose yeah. songs that help inspire certain moods so yeah. a lot of times i can pull myself out of a funk um, and then for me, uh, affirmations is another really yes, good one or, yes. uh, maybe just positive hobbies, going to the gym, stuff like that too. Yeah. So a lot of great exercises, even, um, singing movies. for me, movies is a good movies. one. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice little escape sometimes. Yeah. Or hopping on and listening to YouTube. I mean, I found, well, I've spent years just listening over and over. To I got a lot of videos. Oh, like Anya like says it. a lot of videos. We'll keep you busy. Go ahead. <laughs> Dip into the archives. <laughs> See what you find. Of weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that void for sure. Yeah, he's like, oh my god, there's. I just keep wading in further. It's oh my, oh my goodness. Oh, 
good time. Oh, good times. Yeah. And what comes to mind is you doing comedy too. Like comedy. Uh, I did. I know that stand up was great. I, I will definitely do it again. That was, I did share that on my channel somewhere. Maybe I'll put I that link it. in this, uh, in this I upload. Agree. I know. I love the fact that you watched that. Yeah. Cool. I, I loved it. It was very, uh, just weird. Well, and my topic too, because you, you and I have discussions. We have conversations before we ever film, right? So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the little bit. That's the little bit less appropriate for everybody version of me that I like to be most of the time. Yes, it's good but to it was be fun. inappropriate. Yeah. Man. It's just, <laughs> unfortunately, we can't monetize if we do. No, right? We get uh, we get struck <laughs> down or defend yeah, some people, which I'm not out to do. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to ruffle feathers per se, but I do like to. Yeah, I do like, like to use cuss words a lot. Keep in Google my, and YouTube happy by not doing yes. certain things. Yeah, make sure that AI is just trucking along. It's like, nope, nope, it catches me. <laughs> always, always. Well, Anya, I appreciate any uh, any final thoughts, any things you want to plug right now. I saw you were kind of doing a, I don't know if it's still going on. So uh, you were doing some sort of giveaway of some kind. I don't know if that's still happening uh, or yeah, if there's I anything think, you want to plug right now. Yeah, giveaway. I think it's, I try to always remember when I was really not financially happening at all. I really appreciated people giving me things or things for free. And I remember saying one day when I am able, I would love to pay that forward. So I'm going to do a giveaway a couple of times a year. And this is the first one for this year. So it will be. Is it still going on? Yeah. No, I only uploaded it yesterday. Okay. So, so uh, what do they got to do to, to get on board then? Oh, just get to, get to that YouTube that says giveaway and put your name down. All right. There you and go. So for it. any of you out there, even people on my channel, if you haven't gotten over to Anya's yeah. channel, check it out. It's like she was a day or two ago and yep. you know, these videos live for forever. And they so, forever. um, I don't want to put the date, but you can look to see when it was published. So yeah, if you're not anywhere yesterday. near that date, yeah, it was yeah. published yesterday yeah. and that means it's four days till I announce the winners. Yeah. Right. And then you'll yeah. see this one's published probably a day or two after yesterday. And in which case, um, yeah, if it's like three years from now, that's probably not, <laughs> I'm just saying, I just look at the published now. date You're to put it in get a perspective. Giveaway. Not yeah. this one anyway. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. We're in the year 2018, if it counts, June, early June. So there you go. <laughs> that puts a little perspective on it. Exactly. Well, Anya, uh, it is always awesome. Anya Vivarelli, one of the Beautiful. finest people on this planet. In fact, the uh, formerly, not a lot of people don't know this, but she's actually the creator of the pyramids. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, and Anya uh, Vivarelli also created weather on this planet. Probably didn't know that. And uh, she was the first person to uh, hike Mount Rushmore barefoot. <laughs> so, yeah, no, Anya brings a lot to the table. <laughs> There's no video footage of that, though. No, no, Not they, the no. <laughs> no, you were like carrying three Sherpas on your back, if I remember <laughs> correctly. It was, it, I saw some of those still photos. It was, it looked brutal, but uh, wow, impressive. <sighs> impressive. That's what you get with Anya's people. So check out her stuff for sure. I love her dearly. She's a your, rock star. Your, your mom must have eaten way too many alfalfa sprouts. Something. When she was pregnant with you. Probably, or she smoked <laughs> or who knows. Something horrible probably was going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Remember geez. force equals pain too. That's a good thing because try not to force it. These become painful jokes. No, That's what happens when it. you do that. That's mm. right. Right. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, Anya, I love you. We're going to go out with a great Bruce Springsteen song, if you're okay with that. They call fabulous. him the boss out here. But it's right here with Anya Vivarelli and Dan Radio Style doing Born to Run. Lovely. All right. That wasn't too shabby. You get a 